Hello everyone, it's Jason from Skinny R&D, and today we're going to make a network tap. Uh, but before we make a network tap, we're going to discuss a little bit about Ethernet cabling and how that works and how gigabit and 10100 megabit uh, Ethernet works. So let's get to it. That'll work. So let's take a look at the inside of a Cat5 cable. So I've got one here, and I have it flipped upside down. I can see the teeth here, the gold teeth that are digging into each one of the conductors of the wire. There are eight conductors uh, in a Cat5 cable, so we're just gonna break those down. Each one of them are a different color. There are gonna be two different color schemes. I'll put one of them here. And it starts off with a white-orange mix, then an orange conductor. White-green is next. And you have a blue conductor. Blue-white or white-blue is after that. And then we have green. Next is white-brown. And then a brown conductor. So all these dashed lines are, uh, you'll look on the cable and you'll see white and it has an orange stripe or a green stripe or a blue stripe on it. Uh, but generally that's what it looks like inside of a Cat5 cable. Uh, the only difference is that uh, on some of these Cat5 cables, instead of starting with white-orange, they start with white-green. Pretty much white-orange, orange, and white-green-green green are completely flipped. When it's flipped, it is called uh, 568A order. When it's just like I have drawn here, it is 568B. Uh, Order. Uh, you'll see either one of those. Inside the cable itself, uh, there are a certain uh, number of conductors that are twisted together. There are four pair that are twisted together. So conductors one and two are twisted together. Uh, conductors three and six are twisted together. Conductors four and five and conductors seven and eight. So if you open up a cable, you'll see those color conductors twisted together on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the cable. Okay, so let's get on to talking about uh, how communication actually happens on these things. So right now there are two different ways uh, that you'll have uh, digital bits running up and down these uh, strings. The first is kind of the older type. It uses a uh, 10, uh, 100 um, megabit uh, communication. And with 10, 100 megabit communication, what happens is conductors one and two are used and you have a digital bit flow it goes like this and conductors three and six are used as well now uh, if this is connected up to say a computing device a VoIP phone whatever it doesn't really matter uh, then conductors one and two are going to be the transmit uh, so that's all the information that's leaving that device will happen on conductors one and two all of the information that's coming to that device is going to occur on three and six. So three and six is going to be uh, your your receive uh, for that. Conductors four and five and seven and eight are not used whatsoever. The second type of setup you'll see is a gigabit. With a gigabit type of setup, all the conductors are used. The way this works is that there are digital bits running up and down every single pair. So pair one will be sending bits and receiving bits on that same pair uh, all the time. Three six will be doing the same thing. Every single pair will have transmit and receive bits flowing back and forth at all times. So pretty much you need the full Cat5 cable in order to achieve uh, gigabit speeds. The next question that kind of comes about from this is what would happen if you were to take a gigabit device and hook it to a 10 100 megabit device? Well what will happen is it's going to revert to the slowest speed. So let's say for instance uh, one device down here, let's say this is a VoIP phone that is 10 100 and then uh, up here it's going to connect to something that is uh, gigabit in nature it's going to revert to the 10100 setup. So what that means is that communication will then only occur on conductors 1 and 2, 3 and 6, and nowhere else. So let's look into how we're going to make a network tap. So what we want to do is we're going to pretend like this is a 10100 megabit setup. 
So as we saw before, we're going to have data bit streamed on one and two. That's the information leaving our device. And then we've got data on three and six. That's information that comes from the switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a way that we can tap either one of these. I'm going to force either one and two or three and six into the receive of a monitoring computer. So let's say I have a computer over here and it's running Wireshark, which is a packet sniffing tool. And let's say I want to listen to the transmit of this. Well, this computer has a computer uh, a network card on it. Conductors three and six for that computer network card. We're going to take and we're going to connect it up to the transmit of our victim computer. So now what I'm doing is as Wireshark is running it is siphoning off those bits from that channel and forcing it into the receive of this network interface card so it's picking up all of those packets. At the same time I have not connected conductors 1 and 2 because if I did that then this computer would attempt to talk on this network connection which I don't want because I want to remain silent with this monitoring computer. The same thing goes to the opposite side. Let's say if I want to listen to the receive. What I can do is I can take a computer, a monitoring computer, and connect this up in the same fashion. All the information now that is running on, that is coming to the victim computer from a switch will now be forced into this uh, monitor computer over here running once again Wireshark and capturing those packets. So that's the basic idea of what we want to do with a network tap. Uh, the way I'm going to show you how to build this, you can have one or the other. You can tap the transmit or you can tap the receive. The great thing about the way that I'm going to show you though is that you don't need any sort of electronics. That's why this is called a passive network tap. One other thing uh, to note is let's say for instance we are talking about our victim computer being a gigabit device. What we can do is we can actually cut say cables uh, 4, 5, and 7, 8 and we will then force this gigabit device to be a 10, 100 megabit device because it will slow down because it sees that the only conductors that it has to use are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So now we force this gigabit device to go slower so that we can siphon off the information we want to. Uh, instead of cutting these, if we wanted to keep these live, what we could do is we keep them all connected uh, but we could add a capacitor say between 7 and 8 and what that would do is that would short out any digital bits that are coming down the line uh, and when it sees that 7 and 8 has been shorted out uh, what it'll do is then it'll also revert from gigabit down to 10100 and that can slow it down as well and there's some advantages of doing that. There are many ways to make this kind of tap. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a kit that I've made at the end uh, but this is just real quick how you would do it if you just wanted to use cable. So first get yourself a Cat5 cable and cut it in half. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to strip uh, this Cat5 cable back a bit. Okay, so I'm going to make this uh, I'm going to make this version a little quicker. So I'm going to cut out four, five, and seven, eight. That's going to be the uh, white, blue, blue, white, brown, brown. So I have, uh, that's one cable cut in half, just exposing uh, white green and white orange. And I'm gonna do a similar thing with a, another uh, Cat5 cable that I have right here. I'm gonna cut this one in half. So that's two Cat5 cables I've cut in half. And once again, take this one and strip it back a few inches. Now with this particular cable, uh, what you need to do is you wanna cut off every conductor except for the white green. So now we have pretty much we've made four cables. We've got two cables that just have white green exposed and we have uh, two cables that have white green and white orange exposed. I do want to also make a, a quick note about this. The, both the cables that I'm using are 568B cables. Flip the connector upside down you're going to see white orange on the extreme left of the connector. So that needs to be true of all of these cables. They should all have ends on them and they should all have uh, a white orange to the extreme left on the connection. So the thing I'm doing right now is I'm just untwisting the wires. Next uh, you're going to want to strip each one of these conductors as well. 
So I've got these uh, a piece of heat shrink. I'm going to cut these to size. Go ahead and put them over the conductors before I forget. So the next thing is to take the other side of this cat five and rejoin it. All right. So I'm going to take and twist each one of these pairs back together. Now comes the tap part. One of the cables that we made that had the white green green conductors, we're going to attach this to the white green green conductor on the main run here that we pieced back together. Next, take the other white green green uh, conductor uh, cable that we have and attach it to the white orange orange. I'm going to take the white green green uh, conductor, attach it to the white orange because this is going to be our transmit tap. And then take the uh, green conductor and attach it to the, to the orange conductor. This is all connected. I'm going to trim back a little of this copper so that it's not sticking too far out. Now I could take and end it kind of there, push these down, slide this heat shrink over, and rock and roll with it, but I want to solder this just to make it a little bit better connection. Solder here and get in the iron hot and I'll solder these together. Fold each one of these down against itself and slide the heat shrink over. It's time to take the hot air gun and shrink these up. Okay, that's all it takes put this together. Now, the two white and green uh, runs that you have coming off of this, uh, the one that's connected to the white orange orange, this is used to capture the transmit uh, coming from the victim computer. Uh, the other white green run that's coming off of this main cable is to capture the receive, that's the white green green that it's attached to. Uh, the way I would mark this is I would take one end of this cable, maybe this end, and label it victim. I would take this end and label it switch because this is the part that would either uh, uh, plug into the, the computer switch uh, and this one would ultimately go into the patch panel to the uh, victim computer or to the computer that you want to uh, listen to the packets. And these two are your monitors. So uh, that's how you put this together. Another way to do this is uh, by building this out using KiCad, which I've done here. You switch side, the victim side, and then pull transmit off here, pull receive off uh, over here. Uh, there is an advantage in uh, doing the capacitor mat method because if you connect to a device that requires power over ethernet, then you're gonna want um, all of these conductors connected straight across. Uh, if it's power over ethernet and it's uh, mode A power over Ethernet, then this device down here will work fine. However, if it's mode B power over Ethernet, it uses conductors 4, 5, 7, and 8, and those are the conductors that we cut on this cable. So just like I told you before, you need a capacitor in line to kind of short out 7 and 8, and there is that capacitor right there. Hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.